Welcome back to New England Living. I'm Rachel Holt. Up next, uniquely talented and creative, Blind Fox is taking the art world by storm. You go by the name Blind Fox. You're an artist with such a wide range. How do you describe your style? I would describe my style as a mix between pop art and street art. Also, I do so many different things with so many different clients. It's just kind of a wide range of collaboration. It's a little bit of everything. What is your process like when it comes to one of these projects? Well, the first thing I do is I meet with the client and get an idea for their vision, uh, color schemes, what they're going for, and then I kind of mix in what I do with what they want to do. We put together a bunch of ideas, things we find on the internet, we come up with a concept, I come up with a drawing, and then it's off to the races and we put it on the wall. That's really, in a nutshell, how it goes. Every project's completely different. I am on scissor lifts, I'm on site, I'm painting, um, up and down on ladders, that kind of thing, spray painting all over the place. And then I have projects where I do vinyl wall wraps, and vinyl wall wraps are kind of like the same type of wrap that you put on a car for ads. And those I can digitally design on my couch, and then I have it installed, and that takes one day. There's no smell, there's no mess, it's just a real quick thing. When you're talking about large-scale artwork, like the kind that you're doing, there's a lot of trust involved there. So what was your first big break? I actually did a couple paintings for George Foreman's The Everybody Fights, the gym here in Seaport. So that was one of my first big jobs that I did. After that, you know, people see the work coming to the gym and see it around town and it just kind of grows from there. Since that first big break, how has your business evolved? Oh man, I mean, social media has really helped with that. I get everything from nightclubs, hotels, restaurants, to lobbies, personal residences, game rooms, and that kind of thing. I, it's really all over the place. I think my, my art in general carries a lot of energy and color and life, and that's kind of where I steer my art to being, just kind of just to bring energy into a space and a, and a vibe, if you will. Talking about social media, when people go to these places, a lot of the times they're looking for that nice photo. How does that play into what you do? Well, that is one of my main focuses when I start designing. I know that when people leave their house, it's so expensive to go out these days that you are going to a place where you want that kind of vibe, that energy. That person that's from out of town, you have to say, oh, you have to see this restaurant, you have to see this venue. Everything is kind of geared around making sure that it, you get that full experience when you get there and you get that photo for your social media when you leave. You have a background in the restaurant industry too, so does that kind of play into knowing what experience the patrons are looking for? Oh, absolutely. You know, you just want things that are really energetic and not sleepy. Stuff that you would find in your normal house, you don't want to see that when you go out. You want something that's fun and unexpected, basically everywhere you go. You want to walk in and feel that, wow, that's cool. I know I'm not alone in this, but when I look at one of your murals, the biggest question I have is how long did it take to make something like that? It really depends on the size, how far it is off the ground, what the medium is, because I do so many different things. And it all comes down to planning. Like you have to really plan ahead and have all of the supplies that you need to make sure you get done in a reasonable amount of time, because it can take forever. The mural that I did here at PKL, that one took me approximately four days. You've covered every inch of the walls here at PKL. Describe the artwork that we can find here. So originally when I saw their logo, which was a space monkey, I thought this whole venue had to be space themed. So everything is kind of geared around looking like outer space, starting from the big monkey mural, which is Ernie. Around that we went for an abstract wall and then a drip lounge. And then we have a gigantic UFO that's abducting whoever wants to be abducted and it was based around being for social media so people can stand in the photo and be abducted. These murals are taking up entire walls from floor to ceiling. How do you have this vision for what this huge space is going to look like? You know, I'm creatively crazy. I ha It's cartoons in here all the time. So, <laughs> you know, you just see walls and you think, how can I blend in this cinder block and make it look nice, which is almost impossible to make cinder block look nice. But you figure it out, you can do it. You, you mix colors and you wanna make sure that furniture matches and that everything pops and everything looks unique. This is not something the average person is gonna have in their living room. So when you come here, you wanna be excited and see these things. Your artwork is truly different than anything I've ever seen before. Where are you getting your influences from? 
I'm really influenced by like Andy Warhol and Lichtenstein, the street art that I grew up around. I grew up in San Diego and Los Angeles. I lived in New York City for a long time, lots of graffiti always in my neighborhoods. And it is artistic in a different way, but when I mix it with the pop art and the colors, it just has a different feel. And I just feel so inspired every day living in the city. I'm always just filling my mind with art, whether it's through Instagram or any social media platform. I'll go to museums, I'd love to travel. If you keep your eyes open, there's always art. Coming up after the break, we get an inside look at a Boston-based food innovation lab making international headlines. When New England Living returns after this.